everyone i am jagdeep from grade a today i am going to talk about the topic international conflicts past present and way forward this world is becoming more modern and rich at the same time there are problems and conflicts happening in this world now i am going to talk about the conflicts which happen between nations international conflicts happen when there are inconveniences between nations it leads to forced migration long term refugee problems and the destruction of infrastructure now i am going to talk about some conflicts which happened in the past the first is the sino indian war of 1962 this war was a war between india and china a himalayan disputed border was the main cause of this war the second one was the indo pakistani war of 1965 This war was a war between India and Pakistan. The operation Gibraltar by Pakistan was the main cause of this war. The third one is the Indo-Pakistani war of 1971. This war was a military confrontation between India and Pakistan during the Bangladesh Liberation War in East Pakistan. The fourth one is the Afghanistan USA conflict. The USA almost invaded Afghanistan. to avenge the al qaeda orchestrated september 11 2001 terrorist attacks which is the most worst terrorist attacks on american soil in us history it was a crushing defeat for the usa and now i am going to explain about one of the lengthiest conflicts which ever happened in the world which is the cold war the cold war was a period of geopolitical tension between the soviet union and the united states this war went on for 44 years and 9 months starting from 12th march of 1947 and ending on 26 december 1991 after the world war 2 in 1949 the usa with the help of the european countries formed the nato military alliance or the north atlantic treaty organization in western europe against the soviet union in turn in 1955 the soviet union formed the warsaw pact in the eastern europe against the usa because of this war many conflicts happened such as the cuban missile crisis the korean war the chinese civil war etc When this war was about to end in 1991 the Soviet Union got disintegrated and left in its place 15 other independent republics and Russia was the biggest of them Now I am going to explain about the conflict which is happening right now which is the Russian Ukrainian conflict Russia is invading Ukraine and meanwhile Ukraine is taking weapon supplies from Japan and USA. Russia has surrounded Ukraine from all the directions. But we have only one question. Why is Russia invading Ukraine? The reason is of course a bit complicated, but I will try to explain it to you in simple words. The the Russia has been invading ukraine since the 24th of february in 2022 as of in the cold war the usa formed the nato military alliance and the soviet union formed the warsaw pact but after the disintegration of the soviet union many of the former warsaw pact countries also joined nato which significantly pushes the nato front lines further to the east towards russia as even the baltic states or the three countries which is lithuania latvia and estonia join nato it separates a russian territory from its mainland and the territory's name is kaliningrad it's not totally lost yet in the years following the breakup of the soviet union many of the newly independent republics established and joined their own military alliance what's known as the collective security treaty organization or the csto which in europe consists of russia belarus and armenia but not the ukraine 
which remains some sort of neutral zone between CSTO in the east and NATO in the west. Now we discussed about Kaliningrad which is a separate territory separated from Russian territory from its mainland. As NATO is a hostile military alliance or could become one in the future, NATO could easily penetrate into Kaliningrad and it could easily penetrate to Russia. So that's why Russia is in need of Ukraine. And if Ukraine is in Moscow's orbit, it pushes the NATO front lines to the eastern border of Poland and in case of any attack from NATO in Kaliningrad, the CSTO forces could easily encircle them by rapidly advancing to Kaliningrad. However, if Ukraine become, becomes a NATO country, it pushes the NATO front lines to the east across at least 2300 kilometers of flat land which is very hard to defend and just 300 kilometers away from that land lies a city named Volgograd which if taken by the NATO forces will shut down the entire Volga river and cut off Russia's valuable at oil and gas resources coming up from the Caspian Sea. This is why and this is this is why Russia is invading Ukraine and this is the first and foremost and the important reason. The second reason because of the oil and gas resources. Russia has been the largest exporter of oil and gas in this world. But as of in 2012, from nowhere, Ukraine became the 14th largest oil and gas producer in the world, just behind Australia and Iraq. And as relatively Ukraine is a poor country, Ukraine started investing money on its exports of oil and gas. But if it goes on, Ukraine will become the second country in Europe which will start exporting oil and gas and Ukraine would easily sign a peace treaty with NATO and Ukraine would join NATO. So this is why Russia is invading Ukraine. Now let's come to the future of international conflicts. Russia by invading Ukraine is setting a bad example to the world. By seeing this, China may follow the footsteps of Russia and may invade Taiwan in the future. Taiwan is a territory which is near China and it was ruled by China in the 19th centuries. And the PRC or the People's Republic of China says that they would like to reunify that small territory of China and Taiwan is the only rebellious province of itself. Ukraine's situation and Taiwan's situation is the same but at the same time Taiwan is an unofficial ally or publicly considered as the non-NATO ally of America. The USA president says that in case of any act of invasion from China, USA would come for Taiwan's defense. Even though if China knows it, China, if China invades Taiwan, it would almost create a war in the future. Like this, international conflicts happen every now or then. The credit of controlling those international conflicts goes to the United Nations. The United Nations is making the utmost efforts to control those conflicts and to bring world peace. Thank you.